Hello everybody! It's that day again, Monday! Welcome to Mama Mondays. I'm really excited. I have a great guest with me um, today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, my friend Daryl Edwards of Primal Play. So we'll, we'll talk about him more in just a little bit, but just want to say, hey, how's everybody doing on this Monday? Cheers to you. Every week I make myself a lovely tisane that I then mix with my kombucha throughout the week. Um, this week's tisane features chamomile, linden flower, um, rose hips, elderberry, cinnamon chips, lemon balm. Am I forgetting anything? Holy basil. So um, I use the sway test to just sort of understand what herbs my body's resonating with in that moment. Of course, I also have a little bit of a stocked apothecary in my pantry. That's what allows me to have so many choices available. Um, and so by doing the sway test, I figure out what herbs I want to infuse. And then I let them steep overnight. They make these lovely, they're a little bit bitter. And this is why I combine them with kombucha. See, this is a secret of, um, bitter plus sour like you might think oh my gosh that's gonna taste terrible actually it creates a little sweetness and so i love combining my bitter tisans and they're not so bitter but sometimes they are depending on what herbs i'm using and then i put um my yay daryl's here we're gonna bring him on in just a second um but then i combine them together with my kombucha and it tastes fantastic so hey let's bring daryl on right now Hopefully this worked. Yeah, it worked. Hi, Daryl. Yeah. Can you hear me? And then. Hi. Can, hi. Can you hear me? I can. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, now. great. And I can hear you. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you here today. It's been so long since I've seen you, and so I'm like. Do a little dance. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> exactly. So, um, well, first, I'm just so excited you could join me. So, Daryl is based in, are you in London? Where? You're in the UK. Yeah, I'm based in London. It's a beautiful, sunny day. I'm having a mini heat wave at the moment, so it's enjoyable. Looking nice. <laughs> but we know each other from the States, because you travel a ton, or used to. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think we've we've we we know, we've known each other for at least well, it's got to be at least five years, right? Um, and we met on the dance floor at um, a Paleo Effects because um, I'm an ex-raver from back in the day. That was my jam in college. That's how I got all my stress out. Um, and you are an amazing break dancer. Yeah, I used to be in my in my. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit too I, I, I'm a little bit too old now. I've retired. I'm semi-retirement. Semi-retirement. <laughs> I bet you could do it for like maybe two minutes in a song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I still the, the the passion the passion is still there, and the love the love and the joy is still there. And you know, I think it's a great way to keep to to play and to to keep to keep fit and healthy for sure. So I don't aim to fully retire. That's that's. <laughs> we can't retire from play because then we just become really old. And this is what I think is a real huge message in all of your work. And so. Why don't you just share a little bit, because I, I bet you'll tell your story better than I will, uh, reading a bio off of a page, but just like, how did you get into Primal Play and Animal Moves? What inspired this this for you? Yeah, so I used to work in investment banking as a technologist. I was a programmer. That's what I studied at university. Uh, I studied computer science, um, and I worked for Microsoft back in the 90s. Uh, um, and did did very well out of technology, got headhunted, worked in banking, did very well, very lucrative career, but it was very demanding, you know, and in my 20s and 30s, not a problem. I worked every hour available, did whatever it took to progress, but there was significant, a significant impact on my, on my health. So I had, uh, you know, diagnosed with prediabetes, high risk of having a heart attack, you know, or a stroke, severe blood pressure hypertension and the recommendation was to take medication so beta blockers for the blood pressure metformin for the prediabetes statins for the cholesterol 
Um, and I was really concerned about the kind of cocktail of medication, concerned about the side effects, concerned that this was going to be a, a recipe for life. And, and my doctor didn't... The recipe for death is more like it. Well, Sounds like your job was uh, killing you, literally. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's... I mean, that's the, that's, that's the thing. I, I, I suppose I still... I, 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 don't, I don't want to say that it was a job itself. Um, mm -hmm. It was the, 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 the lifestyle choices I was making whilst doing that type of work. So, you know, I, I, I didn't prioritize sleep. I didn't, certainly didn't prioritize what I, was, what I was eating. I didn't find time for, for much in relation to my health. I, you know, I was young, I, I, everything's fine. What, what do you mean, what do you mean I'm, I've got all of these health issues? I, I don't believe it, not buying it. So yeah, I can't blame the work because it was, I was very fortunate to be able to do the work I was doing um, to, to, to find the success that I did. And, and I just love to reframe that because I think it's easy for us to blame something else for why we're not making those healthy choices, but ultimately we're the ones making those choices. So no, I really appreciate that reframing. Yeah. So you got this whole, all these drugs you might have to be on and then what happened from there? Um, so yeah, I, I asked my doctor if it was okay to rise, to, to, to help with my blood pressure. Uh, and my doctor was like, yeah, you should, you should definitely do that anyway. Um, and I went, is it enough for me to kind of put those medications on hold for, for a little while? Um, yes, it will be, but we're gonna have to closely monitor you. So I wasn't, I mean, I'm gonna be honest as well. I wasn't anti-medication. I wasn't like, you know, big pharma, it's all a con, it's all just trying to get me to be sicker or whatever. It was, it was, it was more a case of me feeling um, concerned about the side effects, like, that's what worries me. <laughs> and I'm probably going to be the person who will have all of the side effects listed on the box, you know. So um, fortunately, I had a bit of breathing room. My doctor was monitoring me closely. And the great news was within sort of 30, 60, 90 days, having regular checkups, my health markers improved. Um, and that enabled me to start thinking about other lifestyle changes that I could make, like, oh, you know, maybe I need to think, consider my dietary choices. Maybe I need to reprioritize getting more than two to three hours sleep a night. You know, maybe there are other things that I could do to help. And that's what kind of faded into trying to focus on a healthier lifestyle. And I stayed with, with that career for, for several years after that, after that change. Um, and, but then started to fall out of love with, with the work I was doing. And I, I was finding I was loving researching um, you know, cross training. So I became a personal trainer and I became a nutritional therapist and I wanted to just amass more and more information and knowledge. And I wanted to be able to help other people. So I suppose that was a, that was a transition. How can I apply this knowledge help to me, but could also help other people in, in a way that would mean I could not, I didn't have to stay <laughs> doing the work I was doing. Um, so to fast track, having working part-time as a personal trainer, having my first clients, having a bit of a boot camp instructor mentality around, you know, drop and do 20, you know, go, 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 go. Military style instruction. And my clients were just clock watching all the time. They would turn up late for sessions. You know, I'm like, you're paying me for an hour, but you're only, you're only showing up for 30 minutes or you're canceling last minute and you're happy to pay <laughs> for the cancellation what you know something's not quite right here they're not enjoying it i wasn't enjoying it i'm like i'm just standing here telling them what to do and i, I don't feel that exciting excited by this and the eureka moment was one of my clients asked me you know kind of sarcastically like if you think this is so much fun because I, I must have quit like hey isn't this fun and i'm like if it's so much fun then you why don't you to go so so when i started working out with with it was like yeah, this isn't fun. I'm hating this too. And so I started thinking about making this more fun through play and playing games. And, and that was it. It was like, wow, this is much more exciting. I want to do this with all of my clients. And, and my clients started doing the full hour sessions and sometimes would ask to stay for longer. <laughs> you know, um, they weren't clock watching anymore. They were having fun. I was having fun as a, as a coach. And so that was my shift from this kind of elitist, purist approach to physical activity and, and fitness to how can I make it engaging? 
how can I incorporate play? How can I incorporate these primal uh, animal movements? Uh, um, and that's how the primal play method evolved and, and came and came about. So yeah, that... maybe <clears throat> all I was gonna say is maybe you mentioned, but what was the first thing you changed? I know you said you got the wake up call about the medications. Your doctors were willing to work with you so that you didn't have to start all of them right away. Well, what? what sort of shifted initially that then led you to like, oh yeah, let me keep trying a few different things here? Um, I suppose it was any, any sign of progress. So, you know, when, when, you find, um, when you find that through personal action, you can reverse some of these markers of, of disease and um, these markers that, that present considerable problems for, for, for us. You, you're that that's that was the motivation right there it was like oh wow my blood pressure has been high for many many years and for the first time as long as i can remember my blood pressure is normal like okay and that was so, because you started sleeping more or you started eating differently that's what i'm trying to get to what was the actions you took that, that made this at that point it was exercise so okay, it, was it, was just, just it was just exercise and I mean, that's a very good point because sometimes people, you know, people come to healthier, come to healthier lifestyle choices through different avenues. You know, some people go through nutrition. I went personally for me, it was, it was through movement. Um, and because of that, my doctor was interested in why that was happening. You know, he, he wanted to understand, could he apply some of this to his patients as well? So I inquired about the reason that he was looking at. Like, I, I want to understand why exercise helps with blood pressure. I want to understand why exercise can help control blood sugar, why it can help improve cardiovascular disease risk, you know, not just getting into shape, but actually improving my health. H how, how is this happening? So that was, my, that was also my journey, is, is understanding the science, the exercise physiology around why exercise benefits us at the cellular level, why our physiology benefits, why it reduces the risk of disease, why it reduces the risk of, you know, um, chronic inflammation, why it improves function, why it improves longevity. There are all of these benefits from exercise that I certainly didn't understand. And I wanted to understand so I could apply that to my, not only myself, but also to my clients. So the science of physical activity, I think, is something which is very um, and downplayed, underplayed within the health and well-being community. You know, it's overlooked. It, it's it's seen as a, a bit of a bolt on. Oh yeah, just yeah, do all of those other things, but then do a bit of exercise as well if you can if you can get yourself get round to it. You know, movement's good for you. We don't know why but it's just good for you. Just do it. Makes you feel good. Do it. Uh, you know. So I was like, no, no, no. I want to know why. I understand the mechanics. I want to know what prescription I should be applying that's going to be improve, make, improving my health chances. Uh, and so you're like reading articles on PubMed, you're like, how are you getting this information? Did you take a course yeah. or what was your way in? So, so training is getting certified as a personal trainer initially. Um, um, you know, it's a proper accreditation here in the UK. So there's a, there's a lot of, of science that you're, that you're being taught. And I saw some people focus more on the practical side, you know, Hey, let's you know, let's do ten burpees and do some pull-ups and squats, and you know, people focus much more on the on the practical side of getting fit. And but I was always a bit of a an intellectual, and I was like, no, I want to understand what 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 is this doing for me and why. So, so now I can now I understand that by um, your heart being predominantly a muscle, <laughs> you know, a pump, um, if it becomes more efficient at doing at doing its job then that way you are going to be bringing your blood pressure down. You're going to be lowering your resting heart rate. You're going to be improving the ability for the body to, to metabolize glucose as energy and oxygen as energy. So, so basically all of these processes that, that involve life itself become more efficient uh, and we have a better, <laughs> um, our body makes better choices in relation to what we should be doing by a movement. So we maintain muscle mass. We maintain a better, you know, better circulation. We improve the ability for the brain to maintain cognitive function. 
we reduce the risk of, of stress and anxiety and depression. We reduce the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. So these are, these are proven benefits of physical activity and exercise. And, and we, can, we can actually break that down as to why those benefits lead to those outcomes. So yeah, so some people focus on the outcomes. Some people focus on what you need to do. And I was also focusing on understanding why we would get you would get those should be getting those benefits so that that was that was basically part of my my role in in understanding this and the primal play method certainly has this sort of trinity of exercise physiology being one of them pillars uh evolutionary biology being another because i believe our our evolution dictates you know, how we should be living even within the 21st century to many, in many respects. And finally, play psychology, because it doesn't matter how good something is, if you're not doing it, if you don't enjoy it, if you can't maintain it, if it isn't sustainable, it doesn't, there's no matter if somebody, you know, somebody tells you how good it is, it doesn't mean you're going to do it. So I had to use play psychology as the vehicle to say, oh my goodness, you know, humans have been doing this for hundreds of thousands of years. We feel better if we do these things. Let's play <laughs> because it's fun. And you're also getting all of these benefits that our body, our body needs. Our body thrives on this, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. Well, and I love that you brought it to the heart, right? Like we think of the heart chakra, the heart center. Um, like you said, it's a pump. And so there is this physiological like driver of everything coming through our heart, but then also thinking like letting that be the lens through which you um, see the world or do your work in the world, right? Like the heart is, is it's the heart of everything, right? And so you're right. right? There's that love, there's that, but there's something about feeding and nourishing and using the heart and, and that being the equalizer for everything in your body or the thing that brings equilibrium and balance that's just really fascinating. And, and I know you mentioned like first you started out with the like military style because just like there's a ton of different dietaries out there, there is a ton of different ways you can exercise. And so obviously you kind of had that more traditional, what, plyometrics and um, calisthenics type of, of background. And then how, like, how did the animal part come in? Like, obviously you're, you're intellectual, you're curious, you're wanting to know more. Where does, where does that piece kind of weave in here for you? I, I suppose the more playful, if you start being playful uh, and curious about movement and seeking joy for movement, then you gravitate towards your inner child. Uh, and you move, you move in a way which is, is childlike, not necessarily childish, but childlike and curious and fascinated by doing different things. And so you realize, you know, I can move in three dimensions. I can move in a way which involves other movement patterns that I wouldn't normally do as a 21st century adult. So when was the last time I crawled, for example, you know, mm. Or one, when's the last time one crawled, I should say. So many, many of us, when's the last time you crawled? Okay. Oh yeah, when I was like probably a toddler was the last time. You know, maybe I, maybe I did it when I was a kid. But for me, I can answer that question and say, yeah, probably yesterday. You know, maybe later today, I spent some time on all fours crawling, doing some animal moves. Uh, um, and it's, and it's, and it's in, not only enjoyable, but it actually teaches you, you, you learn how your body responds to the environment, how it responds to itself through movement. So there's this, there's this experience of learning through movement, which cannot, there were no substitutes for it. So, so we forget, um, because our focus tends to be on the mind very much, we forget that the principal driver for learning for children, for the youngest of children is, is movement. You know, how can I move my head towards my source of food? How can I, you know, pick something up that I want to play with? How can I look at something really fascinating in my environment and get there? How, you know, the, these, are, these are the instinctive drivers that all humans have. And that helps to nourish the brain. Not, it's not the other way around. So we don't become... We don't become like, uh, like theoretical, uh, you know, we don't analyze movement theoretically and then go, oh, let me try and, 
you know, I've seen that human walking. Let me now, let me work out how they walked, how they, how is mommy and daddy walking? Oh, I see how they do it. Let me try that now, <laughs> you know, because I've worked it out, I figured it out. No, they try it out by trying to move, by trying to stand, by trying to balance, by going through that process of physical development. And that brings along with it cognitive and mental benefit and helps to develop language, helps to develop communication, helps to develop to develop social bonding all of these all of these things happen via movement we we completely bypass a lot of that but that's what happens and then there comes a stage where we say no we don't need to do any of those things anymore because we've got chairs we've got devices that will do the work for us we we live in a very sedentary society why would you why would you do any of that physical labor we don't have to and, and we suffer as a result so brains shrink brains become less adept at being able to do the work that they should be doing. We become less creative. <laughs> you know, we become more depressed, more anxious, more out. So, so I'm looking at the kind of the big picture in relation to this. Uh, and play is just one way of saying, if I want to move in a way that feels really good, I want to reduce my, what I believe are my limitations. And so why would I just run and maybe lift weights, right? When I can jump, I can climb, I can carry, I can play tag, I can piggyback carry someone, I can dance, I can dance like no one's watching or I can dance like somebody is, you know, I can pretend I'm sick again, you know, or, or whatever, I, whatever I can do, you know, it, it's like, yeah, I can just try it, doesn't matter, there are no, there are no, there are no limits, um, at least here, right? And I, and I think that's something, yeah, it, it's, it's that part of adulthood which dismisses how powerful play is because we push it to one side and say, we should only play when we get all of the serious things out of the way. When, we've done, when we, I've done my work today, when I've done all the serious stuff and I may have a few minutes spare, then I can let my hair down, then I can play. And actually it's like, well, no, 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 no. Actually play can be weaved in and out of your day uh, and it can help inform what you should be doing with your life, whether that's in business. So as an entrepreneur myself now, play isn't just about physical activity for me anymore. It's how I conduct my conversations, how I, how I remain creative, how I think about products and developing products, how I think about ideas for whatever it may be in relation to physical activities, movement. Um, and right. so first we talked about the heart, then we went to the brain. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and it's all, everything's, you know, as we know, everything is interconnected, right? Everything is interconnected. Well, and the neuroplasticity and, you know, how you keep neurons growing. And just like the more I'm thinking about, the more like you're just staying in one place, like everything just sort of atrophies into, like, you might as well just turn into, uh, you know, just like a blob. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. but like this idea that like the movement, not only does movement, um, get the heart going but then of course the brain going and then like you're saying this creativity and how you know we really for whatever reason we don't give ourselves permission to indulge in that when in fact we should be prioritizing that maybe above some of the other more sedentary uh, ways in which we try to get to creative solutions like it can be a piece that can help like if you're stuck then literally physically move and that's going to get you out of an emotion it's going to get you out of uh, out of, uh, you know, whatever you're feeling stuck in is like physical movement, right? Emotion is energy in motion. But if that motion isn't happening, you stay stuck in it. And so using your physicality to sort of move out of those things, not only does it help with that physical aspect, but also the emotional, also the intellectual, also the creative. And so it just becomes this lovely expression of, of all of those things. And I, I really like, because we are animals, Right? Yeah. Like, it's easy for us to intellectualize our, ourselves away from it, but the reality is, is that we are animals. And so how wonderful to reflect that, to see that movement, to embrace our animal nature. And animals love to play. Animals love to, um, you know, they also have the serious work of survival and hunting and, and whatever else they do, but they also have time for play. And it's something that I think you know, we don't always give ourselves enough time to do. And I remember being at a paleo effects and 
you had people who are in wheelchairs, right? People with MS and people with, and so you don't have to have a specific ability to even engage in some of your exercises. So talk about how, you know, how do you get people into play who maybe feel like, oh, I can't play. I'm physically not able to play. Like, like how do you help people shift that thought process and where do you start them? Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic question and, and it's difficult. You know, sometimes the fitness industry is not uh, inclusive. You know, it's, it, it can be very exclusive and very elitist. And, and I, I, I remember at one Paleo FX, I had somebody, somebody who was in a wheelchair watching one of my sessions and I could just see their longing to take part. You know, they didn't say anything to me. They were just, I could just see them looking and longing. And I said, why don't you join in? And she said to me, you know, look, I'm in a wheelchair. And I was like, no, we can sort, we can figure this out. We can find a way that you can do exactly what we were doing. And what we were doing at the time was jumping. We were like jumping, doing kangaroo jumps. And she's just like, no, I haven't jumped for seven years, you know, since I've been in this chair. And it was like, okay, well, can you get out of the chair? We've helped, yes, okay. So, you know, two of us can help you. We can help you get out of the chair. And then, so I helped her out the chair and I said, you can jump with my assistance. And that's what happened. So she, she kind of jumped. And then she said, then she said to me, actually, can you not give me the support? And she jumped like an inch or two. And she's just like, I can't believe I've jumped. So, so yeah, there's, there's, in that story, you can see how, okay, let's make this possible. You know, what you deem to be impossible, we can make it possible. That possibility was by using assistance. Then we realized, actually, we don't need two people. We only need one. Then she realized, actually, we don't even need you. So I was, I was prepared to be the to do everything to help and assist. But she was like, actually, I don't need that much support. So, so, so yeah, so she was able to do what the rest of the group were doing, i.e. jumping. And, for, and to her, uh, and for anyone watching, that was just as motivating and, and far more inspirational, actually, than what anyone else is doing. Uh, and so that, that was the, that is kind of, again, the paradigm shift, shift for me was by saying, well, how can I, why am I doing this? Why am I playing this game and saying, oh, sorry, you can't take part for whatever reason. Right. And so since that, as all mobility and disability able to take part in my sessions. And, and one of my golden rules is that no one should ever be able to say to me, I can't do what you're doing, you know? I can't take part in your, in your game. And for me, it's about, it's about to the degree, what degree can you take part in this activity? That's what the comparison should be. It's a bit like me saying, I can't race against Usain, with Usain Bolt, 100 meters. Of course I can race with him. Of course I'm gonna be nowhere near, he's gonna be at the finishing line and I'm probably still gonna be in the first 10 meters or whatever, right? But I can still race with him. <laughs> You know, so so. Well, and you're hitting you're hitting a nail on the head there, which is we feel if we aren't perfect, if we can't execute beautifully, like someone's watching all the time or whatever, we'll stop ourselves because we're so afraid of failure. And yet, to your point earlier about well, how does a child learn to walk? Do they just stand up and start walking? No, there's a lot of falling down in the process and getting right back up again. Um, but I really love what I really love about what you just shared about that wheelchair story is that first it started with an invitation. Right. You recognize that she wanted to participate and there was an invitation. Hey, just come join us. Just come play with us. And I think that's really important that no matter where people are at in their journey or their process, if we can invite them into what we're doing, I mean, it's still up to them to say yes or no. But just giving that invitation, even if they feel like, oh, well, I can't execute this the way everybody else is or perfectly. It's like just having that little door open. And then to the next part, you're like, hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to support you. And in fact, what she found and recognized within herself is I don't need as much external support as I thought, and just giving herself the permission, giving herself that space to dive in, to have that playful energy, she was able to do what she could do in that moment. And it really probably helped her uncover another way to, to be in the world, to, to not be this person in a wheelchair who can't do things, 
but a person who uses a wheelchair, but that can also get out of that wheelchair and, and engage in play because she was given permission and, and the opportunity to do so. Yeah, yes, exactly. I mean, that's exactly right. It's so, so well, uh, a great observation and, and it's that all of us can learn, learn from, you know, so, you know, I, I've, I've played with people in a wheelchair. I've, I've gone to their level and played a game of tag, at, you know, because, you know, it's possible. Again, it's, everything is possible if you, if you decide you want it to be possible. And as children, when I was a child and say a new kid came to school and they were going to be, you were introducing them to a game they hadn't played before, say, as a group, socially, if you wanted that kid to play with you, right, you would, you would create rules that would enable that child to make it easier for that child to play. So you wouldn't just continue to play like, oh, share, yeah, you know, you don't even know the rules. Like, you know, you would go, right, oh, how can we make it a bit easier? Right, okay, this is what you can do, you know, to, to almost dumb the game down to make it accessible for that individual until they came up to speed and then you were all, you know, there's some equalization there, there's some, you know, equilibrium being created immediately. And it's the same type of pr process and principle. Play is, you know, in the purest sense, is about full participation. It's about ensuring that anyone can take part. It doesn't, it isn't devoid of competition. Competition is, is important, but cooperation is also important. <laughs> and, and, and ensuring that people feel good whilst doing so. And again, in terms of the animal kingdom, that's why you can have a boxer dog and a chihuahua play fighting. That's the reason why. They don't have weight divisions when dogs are fighting, play fighting. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm a heavyweight, you're a flyweight, sorry, you can't, it's not gonna happen, right? Dogs, big dogs will be chased by little dogs. And they won't, the big dog won't go, no, I'm not, I'm not running anywhere. Look how small you are, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they, right. They don't have that, there's no ego there when it comes to them playing. And, and as, as adults, we find it very difficult to make it easier for people to participate with us because we want to go like, no, why, why should I? You know, I want to show off my skills, I want to show off my ability. Um, and then you're not in necessarily in a playful, in a playful state. Well, you're getting the nail on the head is that like um, when we're too much about how others perceive us, we then don't get to fully engage in the experience because we're so concerned about will I be accepted? Will I be rejected? Will I be this? What? Right. And then you're not in the you're not in the moment. You're in your head as opposed to fully present. And I think that's part of what I love about the animal moves is like everybody looks a little awkward doing some of these things. And so nobody is intended to look like some, you know, beautiful ballerina who spent uh, thousands of hours perfecting her craft um, to achieve that, that perfect line. Um, so what are some of the animal moves that, uh, that you really love that are some of your favorites or that anybody like right now, could we do an animal move? What's, what's a move we can do? Um, well, because we're sitting, I don't, I don't normally sit actually, but this is probably probably the best with my tripod the best way to sit but we we can still do it we can still do an animal move while sitting right so we can we can completely explore what we can do from the camera of our chair so we could we could do a, a kangaroo jump in our chair right we could just hop yeah, so we could hop as if <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. so, that's fine <laughs> Doesn't doesn't take much to do anything anywhere, <laughs> um, and I, and I think yeah, it's really it's really important to just consider your possibilities, consider your opportunities, consider that yes, unfortunately, part of the downside of being a social creature, because again, we see this reflected in the animal kingdom, is that we are concerned about what others think, so other animals in the pack will dictate. There are social you know, um, I've forgotten the word now, but there's, you know, there's a, there's a social etiquette, even, mm -hmm. even in other parts of the animal kingdom. So we shouldn't pretend that it doesn't exist. Like, oh, why can't we just be whoever we want to be? Because I just want to play with everyone and just be myself. <laughs> oh, no, no. there were was, there was social norms, cultural norms that exist for all humans wherever they are on the planet. I, I, um, I think what's important 
is recognizing that, you know, because this is part of our DNA, play is part of our nature. We're born with it, we will die with it. <laughs> it exists throughout our life. And part of society <clears throat> will say that we need, it needs to be suppressed at most, most of our adult life needs to be suppressed. And the only time it's gonna be visible is if it's through, say, alcohol. So okay, oh, if we're going out, then we can be playful. Yes, yes. If I go to Vegas, then I can play all weekend. So, so we've, we've created what we deem to be playful. And we forget that actually we should be able to access that play state at any time, at anywhere, you know. Um, and, we, you know, we don't recognize it in engagement with other humans. So, for example, you know, flirtation is, is play. Comedy is play. Art and creativity is play. You know, even the most creative, you know, a, 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 a conductor, you know, think about conductors, right? When they're conducting, yeah, very, very serious, but some of them are more like charismatic, even though they, they, they're conducting the same piece of music, right? So, so every, everyone can, can, I suppose, take on board their playful state, whatever they're doing. And just to, just to mention one point before I forget about the ballerina, right? Mm. In the ballerina, with what we deem to be perfect form, somebody could see, if you, if you weren't aware that that was good form, that society believes that was something to admire, it would look quite strange. You know, <laughs> if you'd never seen that before, you, you, you saw the first ballerina, you'd be like, what the heck, is, isn't that really unusual, what they're doing, isn't that... <laughs> It's only, it's only because society and culture tells us, oh, that is something, oh my gosh, that's so admirable, that's so amazing. But it, it's, you know, somebody jogging, you know, 50 years ago before jogging was, was a recreation activity, because it wasn't always, somebody would have said, why is that person running down the street? <laughs> in danger. Like I'm, I'm envisioning like the women in the hoop skirts and the men with their cravats and bowlers and like, Right, it would look it would look out of out of ordinary, and yet now you know we have the freedom to to do these things and to be expressive. Exactly. So that's what I always I always think when I when I'm bear crawling on on the you know in my local park, the first time somebody saw me do that, they're thinking, what the heck is that guy doing crawling on the ground? But you know, then my friends join in or my my play out group join in, and then and then people are going, why am I not doing that? Why are you guys, what am I missing out on, you know? No, it, 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 Can I come play with you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I've had those conversations. I've had people say, you know, why are you doing this? What are you training for? Can I, you know, I've got clients that way. Clients have approached me going, you're that guy I see climbing trees and balancing on railings and like doing some s silly stuff. And, and and you know it looks really good. Or my or my kids have been asking me, can 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 daddy, can you do that? <laughs> uh, so so yeah, it, it's it's you have to decide. This is just what I want to do. It may not be acceptable for anyone else. I'm not harming anyone. I'm going to do it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something now. I'm not people to expect that I'm or suspect that I'm quite an extrovert. I'm not at all. I'm, so, I'm very introverted, but the passion to want to move more for somebody who naturally is sedentary, who just wants to play their Xbox all day, that's what I want to do. I want to play Xbox, watch my favorite box, you know, box sets. I'd be very happy doing that all day. So I have to create this almost alter ego that goes, no, go to the park, climb trees, don't care if somebody's watching, sprint against the bus, you know, like create these opportunities for movement. I have to do that. So that enables me to <laughs> come out of my normal self and go, hey, yeah, I can play at any age. And that's what, that's what drives me. Because I'm not a gym guy. I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to go to gym every day. I don't want to, you know, but I know I, I want to, I know I need to exercise. So yes. for me, working out is not, is too much of a chore for me. Playing out is a lot of fun. Um, even dancing, I like dancing, for example, but it's very difficult for me to dance by myself. It's much easier, you know, in a social setting with the right music. And even though I try to create that, like, yeah, I'm just going to dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't recreate the 
feeling by myself very often. Right. So, so I have to be, you have to be realistic with yourself. Whatever your, you feel your constraints are, you have to find a way to work around them or to work with them. Um, and so for me, it usually is the best time for me to dance by myself is headphones on. No one knows I'm doing it. I'm in the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing something really crazy. I don't really care. I feel like I, like I look good, even if no one else would. And I'm having lots of fun. That's the only objective. I'm not trying to impress anyone, <laughs> you know? So that is, a, that is the most fun I've ever had is when it's just me, my headphones. I'm just like freestyling and like, yeah, no one no one can criticize me. No one can make me feel good or bad, you know, with celebration. Right. Um, that's really good. That's really good. I can get out of breath and not think, oh, I look like a chump. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And that's, again, that's recreating, I suppose, how I felt when I was 15, 15, trying to learn certain dance steps, saw a video on MTV and wanted to recreate it. I tried to create this almost play world of like, yeah, I can, I reckon I can do what they're doing. You know, I've got to practice. There were no dance schools I could go to to learn that. It's just going to be me. Maybe my friends might want to do it too. But you create this imaginary world, right? And now I can see I was doing that. I wouldn't have admitted that as a 14, 15 year old that I was creating this imaginary world, you know, that happens for four year olds, five year olds, right? <laughs> but that's what I was doing, creating an imaginary world. I'm on this imaginary stage or on this imaginary video with, you know, Michael Jackson, whoever, and I want to be as good as him. You know, I'm not, but let me try anyway. And, oh, maybe I'm approximating some of what he's doing. That's pretty good. And maybe when I go out to, to my school disco, I can, I can do some of his moves and people will be like, oh, my goodness, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. And I can pretend that it's natural, but actually I've been practicing for like every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but that, that, that part of my, I suppose, my childhood, I wanted to harness again as an adult and to realize that it's okay to be nostalgic. It's okay to, to want to recreate that. Um, and that's why, you know, in my, I gave a TED talk called Why Working Out, Working Out. And I speak about accessing your inner child, whoever that is for you, right? So- Well, because that child never goes away. Even if we that, grow up or act like adults or live adult lives, uh, that child is still there. And that child very much wants to play. And I think this has been, you know, as an entrepreneur or even someone working in the world, you sometimes feel like, oh my gosh, all I want to do is like sit down and color, or I want to, you know, gab on the phone with some girlfriends or, you know, what, whatever it might be. There's, there's just like, we feel like as adults, we're not allowed to do this. And I think of course that's changing as we sort of shift what that means. And, um, but it is, we, we got to play, we got to let that inner child have that fun. Uh, because that's what's going to give us the energy and fuel to then go back to those um, jobs or desks or chairs and, and get those other things done, uh, but breaking it up with the play. So you have a really easy way people can, can do this. It's called Animal Moves. Is it a book? Is it a deck of cards? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I have a book called Animal Moves, um, which it's, it talks about many of the things we've spoken about. It talks about the fact that we're animals. <laughs> it talks about that we have this diverse ability and range of movement skills that no other animals have. Uh, and we need to be utilizing that more. We need to be exploiting that more. Uh, and it, and it, it explores that, it talks about some of the research, some of the benefits to, to moving, moving in the way that, that we should as animals. Um, and I have a range of products called the Animal Moves Fitness Decks, which conveniently I have. I'm right. so glad you have one. Yay. So, yeah, so they're just, they're just, they're just cards which have uh, different movements on. Uh, and uh, this is one of my favorites, the Bear Crawl. And yeah, you just like shuffle them like a pack of card playing cards and uh, you do different moves, you know? So you create lots of movement snacks. Uh, and movement challenges. Wait, did you just call it a movement snack? Movement snack, yes. Oh my gosh, I love what this is. Movement snack. This is oh, like bite. what a fun way because we all want a snack, right? Yes. We like the little indulgence that a snack gives us. Well, what an indulgence of movement snack. That's so, I love, I love words. I'm a word nerd. So that was just like, what a fun gift. Movement yeah, snacks. Movement. Yeah, so. Bite size, you know, bite size pieces of movement that, you know, small morsels of like tasty movement that you can just 
you can just grab when you need to and you don't have to make a big deal out of it right so you know for me a big movie... commitment or like the mental energy and i have to carve out this and my schedule that you can just like anywhere pull out a card like okay here in the office no one can see me i'm going to do some bear crawls i'm going to do some kangaroo jumps and then i'm going to get back to my desk um to... i love this yeah yeah and i have you know i have i do have a, a you know i have a range of animal decks uh fitness decks so i have one for adults i have one for juniors so the seven to 14. I have one for younger kids three to six years old and I have an office space deck as well so I have a quite a range but the office space one is literally people who are might be in a suit or whatever you know in, in office wear haven't got training shoes don't want to don't want to roll out a yoga mat or something at work uh, at their desk or standing at their desk and they still want to get some movement in so, so I've, I've, I've created this range to kind of cater for, for many different situations to, to help people go, I don't have an excuse. You know, I can't say, oh, I'm at work, so I can't do any of that stuff. Well, actually you can. If you, you buy this <laughs> office deck, um, you, you have the options available to you, right? Where you can do more than just going, okay, let me just stretch out a little bit my desk, right? Again, even, right, if you see somebody doing a stretch at the, at the desk it's it's conventional right it, it's people aren't going to be alarmed by somebody doing that so but again at some at some period in even the last hundred years if you see some you know somebody at the typing pool rocking out some sort of tricep stretch you would be like what the heck is that person doing? Well, i've never seen anyone do that before but you know i said it becomes conventional conventional because because think about it right we've we have the ability to create these conventions other animals do what's instinctive right, right? normalized play yes <laughs> so, you know you don't see for example you don't see a big cat you know under under a tree about to hunt a gazelle doing like a warm-up right you don't see them like oh let me stretch out my quads a little bit let me run on the spot to warm up do some star jumps Ooh, gazelles, I'm coming for you. It's come, come, you know, that doesn't happen, right? <laughs> they, they run to the tree, swatting flies, you know, and then they probably just go, oh my gosh, I'm hungry. Got to go, guys. See you. I'm off. You know, maybe successful, maybe. But, you know, that, that we overcomplicate and, and, and create these rigid structures of movement, which sometimes get in the way of us just moving. And kids don't have those restrictions. If, if they're left right. to their naturally, right? You know, what happens? You know, a toddler, you know, you don't hear, you, you're like, they seem really quiet. What's, what's, what's the right? matter? Right, exactly. Normally right. they're just tearing up the place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whereas adults, we just like sit quietly for so many hours doing our whatever. And but I, I love this idea. So I would love. I don't know if we're able to give any of these away, but if we can, let's talk about a potential giveaway of a deck or a book or something. Yeah, I can. I can give away. Um, I can give away a. Yeah, I can give away a signed copy of my book. Maybe that's probably. I love that. And if it needs to be UK only, because that's where you're at, we can do that for sure. We want to. We're international here. We like to uh, make it easy for folks where they're at. And um, that would be a lovely gift for our UK viewers. Yeah, I, I was just checking to see if I actually had a, a book to hand, which I, which I don't. But no, I can, do it, I can do it to UK or US. So, okay, great. So we'll, we'll put up the details tomorrow so that folks have a chance to, to learn more about it. But oh my gosh, it has been so refreshing chatting with you, Daryl. I miss you so much. We have so much fun when we dance in person. Yes. But even oh. here uh, on our on our little phones, we're having fun as well. And uh, I'm just, thanks so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. Any last thoughts for our viewers? Where can they find you, your website? Yes, yeah, so my website is primalplay.com. So that has um, lots of information about the Primal Play method. Um, I have um, free eBooks and, and lots of information available to download. Um, I have lots of research for those who want to who want to geek out and go down the rabbit hole. There's a significant amount of research there, suggest, you know, proposing why it's beneficial. Um, I have videos. I have lots of games for all for all ages and helping people feel more comfortable playing. 
Uh, in terms of social media, I'm known, I'm known as a fitness explorer. Fitness explorer. A long time ago, but I just couldn't be bothered. And, and it's, it's what people know me as, so it's just going to stay. Uh, so yeah, if you search for the fitness explorer, you'll find me on all the social media channels. And finally, if you want to find out a little bit more uh, about me being quite serious, book about my TED talk, which now has a million views. I would love Huge. To it and to comment on it, please, because I want to get more. I want to get a million and one views. So yeah, if you can, if you can watch it, comment on it. Um, it's called "Why Working Out Isn't Working Out" by Daryl. <laughs> I love that. Well, how about this? Why don't we end with just a touch of movement if you're up for it? I've got up. I'm Maybe up for we'll it. Yeah. All right. So I, I, like in our heads. Yeah. Woo, woo. Let me see if I can. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can get my tripod to go be a little bit higher. So that way. Okay. Here we go. I can stand. And I'll, I'll play one of my favorite games. Uh, can hopefully, all get to do. You can do this if you're sitting or standing. But, all right, so all right, let's do it. what we're going to do is we're going to take your right hand, right, you're going to lift your left knee, and you're going to tap the left shoulder, okay, hand and knee down and foot down, and then opposite, yeah, good, all right, so just face, good. And now running pace. <laughs> now, now you're gonna tap tap opposite knee. So shoulder, shoulder, knee, knee shoulder, shoulder, knee. There, there you go. <laughs> okay, a little bit faster. Okay, okay. So you get into the rhythm of that. We'll do one more, which is a little bit more challenging coordination-wise. So now we're going to do double taps. So it's going to be tap, 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 tap. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> but this is like I feel I'm working both sides of my brain. My heart is working. He's got crossbody. And it's not that hard. Yes, I'm out of breath, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's very simple ways of, of uh, <laughs> just, being, being, just getting, you so, getting, getting ourselves thinking differently about movement and having a bit of fun. So, yeah, I'm out of breath, too. It's, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. That was so much fun, Daryl. Really appreciate you being here. And we will share everything with everybody. And thanks so much. We'll see you hopefully next time soon. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.